Hi, how's it going everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking a little bit more about Air New Zealand. So a few months back I made a video talking about how Air New Zealand released their recapitalization plan to allow new shareholders the uh, right to purchase shares at a reference price of 77.5 cents each. Air New Zealand has announced a plan to raise $2.2 billion in terms of a recapitalization package. I've said uh, in that video that it is possible that after the uh, share distribution, there'll be a significant short-term sell-off of Air New Zealand shares from the existing shareholders that have taken up the rights to buy shares at a price of 53 cents per share. So essentially, uh, the price was predicted to end up between uh, 53 cents per share and 77.5 cents per share. So if we take a look at the share price now, and that's pretty much exactly what has happened. So after the uh, distribution, there's been a consistent sell-off of the uh, New Zealand shares. And now the uh, shares are trading at around 53 or 54 cents per share. Now, in that video, I've also mentioned that I will not uh, personally be uh, investing in New Zealand myself because I think it will take quite a while for them to recover. And especially uh, with inflation going up around the world and not just in New Zealand, and many people are predicting a, a reduction in spending, if not just a downright recession. Now, with that potentially happening, now what's the first thing that most people tend to cut out when they are tight on money? Well, this is not really meant to be a trick question. People tend to cut out on luxury goods and expensive travel plans. So I got quite a lot of comments on my old video and one of the most common comments that I've got was that I'm being too pessimistic on Air New Zealand. The first common reasoning from people basically boils down to Air New Zealand is supported by the government and there is no way that they would fail which uh, personally I actually completely agree with. Now there's no way that Air New Zealand would fail when they are essentially uh, backed by the government and taxpayer money. But that does not necessarily mean that they will be making a lot of profit. If the reason to buy a company is because they won't fail, then people should be buying companies such as Ford Motors instead of Tesla. Ford makes and sells more cars than Tesla, but the share price is not uh, reflected at all by the amounts that they sell. If we simply look at the charts for Ford Motor Company, we can see that their share price has been incredibly uh, stagnant for over the past 10 years. So I think it's not uh, unreasonable to say one of the main reasons why most people invest is uh, with the hope of making a profit some point in the future. Now, just because the government has a hand in Air New Zealand really doesn't mean that they will earn lots of profit in the future. Do they have the potential? Sure, uh, there's always the potential. Uh, it could easily take many years for them to bounce back. Which leads me to my second point. The second thing that many people have mentioned was that if you get in New Zealand shares at a low enough price, you are bound to make a profit, which again is something that I completely agree with. If I were to take an educated guess of where the bottom of Air New Zealand shares will be, now Air New Zealand should be quite close to the bottom now, considering uh, around 50 cents mark has been the historic low for Air New Zealand. But what you also need to ask yourself is that what exactly is the uh, potential of the company here? Now, if I were to purchase a company, ideally, I would like the uh, company to have either good growth potential or if that's not the case, uh, ideally, I would like to have them have at least a good uh, uh, dividend history. In order to find that out, you would have to take a look at the sectors they are in and maybe the uh, past history of the company to get a rough indication of how they uh, perform when compared to the general market. It didn't use to pay out a dividend, but now that has stopped for the uh, past two years. So let's take a look at Air New Zealand in a more long-term view. So we want to switch to the uh, weekly view. If we go all the way back to uh, 2019, at the very low of the housing bubble crisis back in 2019, 
this is where the market is at its lowest. And New Zealand share price was around 50 cents per share back then, which is actually similar to what it is now. Since then, their share price has gone up over the past 10 years before the pandemic, which coincided with the longest bull market that we ever had in history. And it doesn't take a genius to pick stocks that do well when everything essentially is going up. However, Air New Zealand just didn't perform all that remarkable when you compare it even to the general market. As a comparison, if we simply look at the uh, New Zealand Top 50 Index, the New Zealand Top 50 Index has grown more than 400% uh, from the lows in 2009 to the peak in uh, 2021. Now, even with the uh, recent pullback, the uh, New Zealand Top 50 Index is still more than 300% up over the past 13 years. Now, this just goes to show that in New Zealand as a company itself have never actually really outperformed the general index. Can they do better than what they're currently doing as uh, the uh, borders open up? Sure, of course. But I just fail to see how they can get significantly better. Looking at the Air New Zealand revenue history over the past 15 years, they have not had any significant increases in revenue even during the uh, good years. So in conclusion, uh, airlines to me are just not a very innovative sector that has a bunch of new and exciting breakthroughs. Now, they have been relatively uh, similar over the past 40 years, and in New Zealand is already considered as one of the more highly uh, rated uh, airlines, so there isn't even really that much to improve on that front. There isn't any real new technology that improves airlines significantly apart from uh, jamming more people into uh, smaller spaces. Now, it's very hard to see some new wild technology that would completely uh, change the airline industry. Now, if I were to think about buying Air New Zealand shares, Instead of doing that, I would simply uh, just buy the uh, New Zealand Top 50 Index instead. I get the idea of wanting a relatively safe investment in a stable company, and because they are backed by the government, they can be considered as relatively safe. But like I said, in the past, Air New Zealand has a fairly healthy uh, dividend history. Uh, but because of all the lockdowns and disruptions to the entire travel industry, they have not been paying out any dividends for the past two years. And it's hard to tell when they will be paying out dividends again. So again, the question is, if you are looking for something that's relatively safe, why not just buy a well-diversified index fund? And if you're more looking for more growth instead, uh, why not look for a company that may have higher risk, but also higher potential growth? Now, Air New Zealand just sits in this middle area where they are good, but it's hard to see them having any uh, significant growth. But that's just my uh, personal opinion. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next video.